was the dog with an interview, providing some very cool answers there about his thought process and uh, how he went about the games. We're going to be having Braros versus Tice next, and something that we overlooked is that if Tice loses pretty badly to Braros, then uh, dog goes or dog advances over Tice as well. So, uh, pretty interesting situation right now as we get Tice on the screen. Let me just uh, give Kaldi the. Are, are you? Can you see the screen right now? I can, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. It looks it didn't have the red border, so it didn't look like you were able to able to see it. Anyway, we have Tice's decks on screen at the whoa, I'm sorry. At the moment, and it's going to be Druid, Priest, and Warrior. Oh I'm sorry. Uh, that's, Warlock, that's, that's yeah. Bro, Bro, um, I'm sorry. So it's Reno Lock player. Druid Paladin. Reno Lock, Warlock, sorry. Reno Lock Secret Paladin and the mid range druid. Very expected. Are uh, Tice now what I'm most excited to see is the uh, the the Reno Warlock having 30 different cards is not, don't, you don't see that every day here. Um, but yeah, both Paladin and Druid seems to have gone all out here for this last one. I mean, so bringing a power lineup for, for game three, an anti aggro lineup for game one, I really do like that. Yeah, definitely. So, going to be interesting to see how he's able to shut down the lineup of Bra Rose. And we see Bra Rose on the screen right there from Team Celestial. And let's take a look at his decks. He is bringing the Shaman, Priest, and Warrior. So, yeah, going to be seeing that mid-range Shaman with the Tunnel Trogs, but also the Neptulon and the Doctor Boom. So, kind of an interesting situation there. Tunnel Trogs seeming to be anti-aggro. Uh, the Priest looks like a Dragon Priest with the Acera. Kind of more in line with what we see in the West. And as far as the Warrior is concerned, it's going to be what looked like a Patient Warrior. And uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see how these decks match up against each other. Who do you favor in this situation? I think I have to favor Tyus. It seems that just based on the decks, at least, Tyus has the powerhouse for game number three, whereas Braro seems to have, have kind of the leftovers, I want right. to say. Or so far as to say, I mean, the the, uh, the Dragon Priest and the Midrange Shaman don't really work together particularly well, whereas something like Dragon Priest and Freeze may work very well together, um, in Conquest at least. Uh, looking at the Dragon Priest from, from Braros, my the, the strange thing was that he actually has one Pyromancer and he has Pain, something we don't see generally. He had uh, Sylvanas over Boom or Tilmaw, Chil Chil which is something that's also uncommon here in the West, uh, also only one Melon's chosen. Mm -hmm. so wow, I this did is not notice be, uh, that. Yeah. That's pretty unusual, Melon's chosen, such a powerful card in that deck. It looks like we are going to be getting into game number one. Just a reminder everyone, I do believe that if Braros wins three games to one, then Tice is out, and Dog so. and Braros are in. So it will be very important for Tyus to pick up at least two victories in this series as we get onto our first game. It's going to be Midrange Druid versus the Patron Warrior. Good start for Bra Rose. This is a favorite matchup, and he even has that fireworks to kill off this Darnassus. Just to talk a bit about the current situation. So Doc went, uh, is basically right now at plus two, or plus one in map score, sorry. So his map score is, yeah. Plus, wait, wait. Oh, he, he, was, did... he went 3 2 2 3 and now 3 1, so he's plus 2, yeah. 3 1, okay. Pl plus 2 then, yeah. Uh, plus 2, Tyus is plus 2 as well. Right. And Braros is on 0. Yeah. So if. Actually, wait. So if now Bra if. If Braros yeah, goes if, yeah. 3 and 1, then he's plus 2 along with Dog and he's through, and that would make Tyus be even, so then Tyus does not go through. <laughs> So Absolutely. basically, and if Bra Rose wins three games to two, then he would be plus one, and then Tice would be plus one as well. So then Tice and Dog goes three. So Bra Rose has to win this three games to one. Wait, are, are you sure that if, if oh, sorry, Bra, Bra, Bra Rose wins sorry. three one, if Bra Rose wins three one, mm. wouldn't Tice and Bra Rose be tied? I think then they'd both be at plus Bra one. Rose would be no. Bra, Bra Rose wins three one. He is plus two. Actually, yeah, plus yeah, two. plus two. Right, he's plus two. But if okay, wait, wait, wait. If it's <laughs> if it's three to two, for Bra Rose, then Bra Rose is plus one, and Tyus is plus one. So if Bra Rose wins three to two. It's a tie, and then we actually have a coin toss. Um, I, I think there are more tiebreakers before it gets to that point. And since it's only actually I mean, since it's only a two-way tie, I think Bra Rose wins because it goes to head to head. The, 
Head to head, okay. I see. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, let's Bronze. talk about this game. We will, we can uh, maybe get to that between the games, but uh, yeah, the Paladin Shredder coming down. Brawros def uh, kills it with the Despite. He does have an amazing hand with that uh, with the Grim Patron and the Inner Rage, but uh, does doesn't like to see that Totem Golem come out in this situation. And uh, let's see how Tyus responds against this. He could play the Jewel of the Claw, which wouldn't die to the Despite, but he could also go for the Low Theb, which shuts down the Inner Rage. Now, generally, you don't keep the patron unless you have a death pad in hand already. Baros went for kind of a, a, a risky position to go for the, uh, the grim patron already. He's going to be rewarded because he did tough deck both the inner rates and the uh, death pad. So if, if Tyus ends up going for the the claw, it's looking pretty rough. Or potentially the, uh, the keeper of the growth. Um, depends how he's going to go about this. Okay, so he does charge this up. A whirlwind, yeah, would be devastating, like the Chinese stream is showing here. Not sure what he is actually going for. He may just have to go for the Patron board here, but just to talk about it. Okay, so the situation is the map score doesn't matter at this point. If Tyus wins, Tyus goes through. If Braros wins, then Braros goes through. Right. Even if it's a 3 2, oh, okay. it doesn't matter. So it's just who wins this match. Right, right, right. So, yeah, this everything is on the line here. Dog is through. Uh, it's still up in the air whether or not he finishes first or second place, but uh, whoever wins this match will advance, so very, very important. And Braros has a huge decision on his hands right here. I mean, it's it, usually you just go for the patrons, but if you do that, then his board is going to get completely cleared. It sure is here. I mean, the, the fortune nature on top of that, so this is actually looking even. I think... In this case, though, we may actually just have to go for the patron board and, and be happy about that. Because, I mean, if you go for Lothep and Tyus ends up fading into the Lothep, what can he do with the Despite? Taunt just messes it up. Maybe his idea is to coin out the battle on top of it next turn, but I don't know. Right. Yeah, definitely a tough uh, situation. Uh, for both players here. Tice, I mean, he has a decision whether or not to go for the Azurgic, which could hurt him in the long run. Uh, Lothop could shut down everything that Braros is trying to do. And, um, yeah, I mean, I imagine Tice might just leave this, this Lothop alone since it's not the greatest trade uh, for Tice anyway. But yeah, does go for the Lothop, and uh, I think, yeah, looks like he's just going to go face here. Put a lot of pressure on Braros and potentially just be able to kill him with the combo if he picks up Innervate or if he's able to keep the pressure up. Now, this may be a bit excessive, but is there any way for for Tyus not to die here? No, for, for Browse not to die here. I mean, right. let's look at Fiery War Axe, Hero Power. Kills the Druid, the Claw, and the Totem Golem. Oh, he it's... goes down to... Uh, <laughs> this is so is painful, it? you're right. Yeah, he needs to go to these drastic measures and just throw away any potential for having the Grim Patron on board. And this is this is the uh, advantage of being so aggressive. Obviously, Ty is not worrying about this Lothar, just attacking the face, and this makes it so that Braros has to be so defensive here, or else he's just dead. Yeah, if, if Braros doesn't go for Fire War Axe, Hero Power, then he's just dead. And if he goes for Fire War Axe, Hero Power... He has one health remaining. Yeah, it's such a horrible spot to be in here as Braros. Oof. Yeah, he's going to have to clear here. Uh, hero powers before he attacks, but he's not going to matter too much because obviously there's not going to be... There's usually not Steel Simon here. So what does Tice pick up? Picks up a Wrath. Uh, can continue the aggression with it. Azure Drake doesn't have lethal right now. Uh, one damage, obviously, with that force in nature. But... Yeah, this is so much pressure on Braros, and typically this is a favored matchup for the Patron. It actually got more favored after the nerf to Warsong Commander, because uh, that card usually wasn't the greatest in this situation. But so, yeah, again, so much pressure on Braros, and I don't think he can get out of this one. That is true, yeah. There is a downside to using the weapons for removal. It, your health does go down, and you can get punished. Actually, could be strong here, but, though, but let's look at the scenario. Okay, so he's taking 7 from the... Uh, Actually, it's eight from. I think he needs a second Sabbath execute, for. right? I think he needs a second execute, right? <laughs> he needs to slam and then execute both, just to stay alive. With here. the with the hero power though, he's gonna be at eight health and right. four, and do the claw Savage or is eight. Oh yeah. So wait, okay, slam into that Drake. Shield block. <laughs> if, it, if he has it in his deck, right? Yeah. So that's 
almost... I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't think Brawos can do anything to get out of the situation. Uh, he's quite nearly dead on board as it is. And uh, yeah, it's probably going to just be a Frothing Berserker coin hero power. And uh, after he kills his Drake. That's going to be it. A simple Drew the Claw will kill him. Basically every single card in Tice's hand kills him right now. <laughs> and that's going to be game one going to Tice's Druid. It's two here, yeah. All play to Tice. Honestly, Barrows just had a rough start here. Yeah, pretty and tough. Tice, I think, yeah, navigated Bros. this beautifully, and he had exactly what he needed. So, game one going to Tice. I mean, if you look at the lineup, though, Tice is favorite in the lineup and gets the better start. Has Secret Paladin and Reno Lock left. I feel like Secret Paladin, it's almost impossible not to draw a good hand at least once. Right. Yeah, it's going to be. Like you said, difficult for Tice to lose, especially given his usually impeccable decision making. Uh, we saw that de decision making on hand at the World Championships as well in his stellar run there. And yeah, going to be a super uphill battle for Bra Rose. Definitely the underdog when it comes to stature. And uh, looking at these deck lines, going to be the underdog in that field as well. So let's see how Bra Rose can maybe recover, maybe get back into this match. But yeah, definitely feeling the pressure right now with his Shaman Priest and Warrior. Absolutely here. All right, so let's look. Let's uh, kind of review these decks, I suppose, while we're waiting for Braros to maybe select one. Uh, Tice does have the Secret Paladin. Does have the Reno Warlock. Braros we just saw there with the Patient Warrior. Looks like we are getting to the game, and uh, this looks like an yet another unfavored matchup for Braros. Absolutely. Have you played the Reno Warlock? I, I have to say I haven't. I played a lot against it, but it it seems. Hard to play against even because you do you actually play on the molten giant when there's only one molten giant? I feel like Secret Paladin is favorite against Reno Lock if you play passively, if you don't overextend. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much compact potential for the Reno Lock, and you start generally slightly behind. You maybe have a one drop and a three drop, tapping in between. Then it gets kind of awkward in the mid game with maybe Fugan and maybe Nostalag or. or and then it goes to something like Boom or, 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 or the second uh, zombie brother there. Yeah, Fugan and Salag, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, obvi the obvious weakness for the Reno Warlock is that, obviously, you're running one of every single card, so it's not as consistent. Obviously, you kind of double up on the same effect. Uh, you see, we saw the Demon Wrath in the hand of Tyson, most likely running Shadow Flame and Hellfire as well. Uh, sometimes you even run Twisting Nether. But, uh, yeah, I would imagine that would be the... Uh, the weakness of the deck, so maybe you just prey on the fact that you know, they, they don't draw their answers for you and you can kind of commit all in uh, if you're Bra Rose. But uh, this is definitely an unfavored matchup. Tice has the Shadow Flame and the Hellfire to potentially deal, or not in hand, but in the deck to potentially deal with Bra Rose's board full of patrons. Has all of the removal as well. And uh, Braro's going to start right off just hitting the face with the Fire Oryx, realizing he needs Whoa. that damage. <laughs> Yeah, he is in a hurry, that's for sure. Um, but talk briefly about Fugan and Stalag. Now, yeah, Fugan and Stalag is absolutely just so powerful. Sorry, uh, or you were going to talk about him. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I guess what I was going to talk about is how, how do you know which one of them is Fugan and which one of them is Stalag, and which one of them has seven attack and which one of them has four attack. Well, and now, actually, how, how, it, how it goes is you, you take the first <laughs> letter in the name of the minion and the first letter of the attack. And those two match. So, F, Fugan, <laughs> F, four, Fugan, S, you know, Stalag. And, and seven, Stalag. S, Stalag, seven, four, yeah. Fugan, so, yeah you, have, you also have to remember that it corresponds to the attack damage and not, or the the attack number, not the health number, which is yeah, so absolutely. hard to remember. But, uh, yeah, in, in any case, Ty's looking to be in an okay spot. I imagine he wants to pick up the. Uh, the AOE move as quickly as possible, but if he puts on the pressure, then maybe it's difficult for Bra Rose to, you know, get the patrons on the board or have the time to be able to do that. But uh, Bra Rose does have three, two of the three pieces that he could potentially need uh, with that Death Bite and the Inner Rage, so just needs that patron to be able to maybe make a game of this. Yeah, I mean, Tys is definitely banking on, on uh, Bra Rose using a sweater here. I mean, he was, yeah, what, what are you going to go for now? Is he he was kind of looked to me like he was expecting to be able to silence something. 
Right, yeah. He was thinking maybe he could silence the Shredder coming out, but uh, the most common answer to that inking boss, speaking of the warrior, is that uh, Despite deals with the first body and deals with the int that come out with the following uh, attack, obviously. Bra was unable to pick up that Grim Patient, which would have been huge here because we see in Tice's hand he has nothing to deal with it other than those two silences. As for this turn, Tice has the ability to play. Uh, I think that was a Fugan. He's getting too small for me to look at at the moment, but uh, unlikely to see a heal bot. Everything else is kind of just awkward, so yeah, it looks like he is going to play out that card, be it Fugan or Stalag. I, I think it's Stalag. I think it's Stalag, uh... okay. Stalag is, a bit, is obviously a lot weaker in this situation because Brawros can just take it out with his uh, Death Bite. And it mm -hmm. is Stalag, right? So. Um... Ty's just going to attack him with this 1-1, one, one, realizing that it's likely going to die to this death bite. But uh, yeah, this is def this is kind of the reason why people don't uh, prefer this card in the first place. Because uh, Fugan by itself is pretty good, you know, 4 7 for 5. But having to play Stalag as well to get the full value is pretty painful. Don't really want a 7-4, you're basically just paying for a salty dog. And uh, eventually, you know, Thaddeus could get BGH'd as well. So it's nice in this deck, especially because you're forced to run one ofs in this situation can be pretty powerful, especially because uh, the BJs can only take out one target, um, and you know you, you have the Doctor Boom to be able to uh, contest as well. So sorry to cut you off there, but uh, I mean, if he was going to kill the kill the uh, Fugan, you would want to attack with the Belcher into the Fugan, and then use the uh, that's to kill the uh, Flame Imp to take less damage. But I don't really know what his plan is here. Okay, he's going to delay one turn, but it just gives him more chances to draw the. Uh, to draw the uh, AOE. I guess his idea is, okay, I'll use my patron on the same turn as Battle Royale, so at least get minions back. But I feel like next turn has to be it. Okay, if he doesn't have a model coil, you can trade something else on top of killing Fugan. Yeah, I suppose Braros is being pretty uh, greedy here, wanting that uh, Stalag to, to uh, trade into the Belcher, and then from there he can kill off uh, the seven one Stalag with his death bite, and also you know benefit from having this patron. So looks like he's being pretty greedy here. And he can also get the battle rage as well. So I think that's what Braros is thinking about. He's giving Tice more time to draw into that AOE though. But uh, as it is now, Braros is is in as good a position as you can hope for in this matchup. I think so. Yeah, everything's been going right for him, but he's still not in a commanding lead. There's less burst. I think. The old patron would just demolish the Reno lock, but yeah, this is a different time and a different meta. Right, exactly. And uh, let's see what Braros does here. He could just go for a pretty risky play by killing off the Sylvanas here and using a Sludge Belcher as well. Uh, could go for a lot of cards in the meantime with that patron. So, uh, what do you go for here? I mean, could be just, you know, the Sludge Belcher into the, the Stalag and then play the patron. Then uh, Inner Rage, then use Battle Rage after you use your Death Bite. Hopefully the, the uh, Sylvanas doesn't take anything great, but looks like he's going to go for this play and play it conservative. Doesn't want uh, Sylvanas to take anything great here, but it is going to mean that he won't be able to kill the Stalag off with his Death Bite. I don't get this though. Why wouldn't he use a Death Bite? And if you're going to use a Death Bite, use it on the 7-4, you know, and, and right. basically trade... What, what, what could have done is trade the Belcher in, in into the Fugan and go face with the weapon. Right. That way both minions die and you don't take any damage. So that's... It looks to be a better play. Right, yeah. I guess he was really... He wanted to use his death bite with the patrons and he just really didn't want to get a patron stolen by Sylvanas. So I uh, went for that play. Got a bit punished though when uh, the opponent stole a taunt minion. Wasn't expecting a taunt minion out of that shredder and uh, was going for the 50-50 that it wouldn't steal the, the slime. But uh, in the end, is able to get a pretty decent board, and Tice, crucially, does not have any AoE in hand at all. What he does have, though, is time, and he could easily just tap here, and uh, or double silence, even. He, he could, I think, tap and heal, but is what I like here, out of these options. Mm. Yeah, he has a little bit of time, but we do see that there's plenty of damage on the field right now. 14 damage just from those patrons, and we could see a Grom in a rage next turn uh, if Raul was able to pick that up. And Tice just saw Brawl draw, draw a lot of cards as well, so he could be fearing that. We see him kind of shaking his head, wondering what to do here. 
and uh, could go for a greedy play, could go for the safe play, which would be, uh, I, I suppose, a bunch of silences. Looks like it's going to be the implosion just to get some damage off the board, followed by a silence and only leaving the 3-2 on board. No, it's a playing for the long game here. Oof. There are options he could get or get a lot of armor, but in terms of clearing this though, what can he really do? For Bravos, I do like I, I I I do like the uh, at least the idea of of uh, leaving an unstable ghoul. If you're gonna go for an unstable ghoul, you just couldn't go full on face wow. then. Yeah, this right. is really interesting. Um, looks like he's gonna trade the five one in so that it doesn't die to any of the one ones on board. But gonna spawn more patrons with his uh, three two. Does he commit to the inner rage cruise? Uh, I think he should. So I think he really should. Yeah, he could have Why actually not? gone for a couple of patrons by going inner rage plus a taskmaster, but uh, hope maybe saving that for the Grom potentially that he could pick up. Maybe think that that's his only way to come back in this game. Ties with another I mean, difficult decision with no AOE once more. You throw one out there though. You throw the inner rage out. You have the Grom potential later on. Right. I mean, a five a five two for zero mana is not bad. Yeah, definitely could have been, you know, an option for Bra Rose, but doesn't go for it. Tice, he just, he doesn't know what to do here. Has the big EH for the Dr. Boom, but definitely under a lot of pressure. A Grom at any point would kill him if this board stays this way, but looks like he's going to finally kill off the last of these patrons, at least the ones that are capable of being spawned. And uh, we will see if he commits to any sort of healing. Uh, looks like, oh, obviously you can't, uh, now that he's gone for this, my mistake. Goes for the BGH, and now a Grom would be lethal, yeah. Grom would have been lethal there. Uh, that is true, yeah, but he can't play around everything, and Tides is choosing exactly what he wants to play around. Uh, bomb goes down. Hmm. Gets a hit for four. Pretty decent. Drops the shredder. I really like this. He's not playing on the Molten, and I think that's... That's good, but um, I guess to talk a bit about why I would have gone for the inner rage last turn is that it's been heavily indicated to Braros that Tyus doesn't have AoE. He had a turn there with a 7-1 a which he could have exploded. He could have gone for Hellfire, but he just chose to do nothing of the sort and, and not AoEing. So I think, yeah, it could be safe to say that Braros should have known that there was no AoE. And in that case, I think the inner rage is, is playable. Yeah, potentially maybe playing around the top deck here. Let's see how gr uh, greedy Tyus can play it this turn. Looks like he's going to go for the silence onto this uh, Frothing Berserker. Obviously already used the Owl earlier. Um, and going to put that Sludge Buster up. Really uh, man efficient turn, but we'll see what Braros can come up with here. Doesn't pick up the Grom. Um, I, yeah, it was lethal if he did pick up Grom that turn. So Tyus kind of playing super greedy here. Doesn't want to make any uh, weak plays, even though he could be dead at any moment. Braros going for the in the uh, inner rage there rather than the Taskmaster is pretty interesting. He does pick up the slam, which is nice for him. We'll be able to trade much more cleanly into this Belcher. Picks up the Whirlwind as well, but that doesn't really help him too much in this situation. And uh, let's see how aggressive Braros can be. Currently, he has a pretty decent amount of damage to face. The most he could do now, I believe, is 9 to face. Mm-hmm. And that's that pretty powerful. Uh, yeah, if he were to... Yeah, he could attack his, uh, his Frothing Berserker and use his Cruel Task and uh, get a lot of damage, but uh, likely going to just save his... Oh, he's going to actually trade in just to prevent any sort of Shadow Flame shenanigans. And <laughs> this is looking actually really good for Braros, though. Tyus can play that Reno Jackson at any time. The one AoE and, and things turn around completely. I think Reno may have to come down here. Obviously, he would tap it. Hellfire, he can Reno Hellfire. Oh. Wow. Hellfire Reno would be pretty huge here. Would leave behind a 2-drop and a 1-1 one, one armor smith. But, yeah, I think you absolutely have to go for it here. This is pretty devastating for Braros to see this. Uh, let's see his reaction once the Reno comes down. I bet there's going to be no reaction. Oh, he's not yeah, happy about yeah, that. Yeah, not yeah, happy at pretty all. big reaction that we saw there. He was not happy about that situation. And uh, he can, you know, maybe start developing more patrons here if he so desires. Mm -hmm. um, can go for the patron plus the uh, Cruel Taskmaster and the Whirlwind since he just saw 
a Hellfire. And there were so many situations where Tyus could have used the Hellfire or some sort of AoE earlier on. So Brawros obviously knows that that was, that was a top deck, but he knows that there's no additional uh, AoE in the hand of Tyus. So yeah, going to just fill up this board right away again, and Tyus can't be too happy about this as you see him look toward the ceiling. Yeah, I think it's important for uh, him to keep in mind that he's still ahead, and Tyus still needs the second AoE. If the second AoE shows up, it's lights out, but... This at least was a big, big step for Tyus to climb back into this game. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Brawl was going to commit to that execute. Doesn't want any minions on board to be able to compete with his Grim Patrons. And uh, yeah, Tyus obviously was a huge turn last turn, but don't count out Brawl's just yet. That Grim Patron top deck was absolutely huge, and now he has a commanding board lead once again. Voidwalker not what he wants to see, but... Hillbot does seem even unnecessary at this point. He can't really go for the Jiraxxus, so he needs a top deck. Oh, and a Mind band control tech. <laughs> you see kind of a funny look on Tyce's face, thinking this could do something. We'll see what it steals here. Takes a 3-2, which is probably the third best minion on the field that he could have taken here. Looks like he's going to go for the Hillbot. Not because he needs the heal that much, but wants to go for the more expensive minion in the situation. Uh, instead of going for the forest here, which can be used uh, much more cheaply later, whirlwind is pretty big here, though. <laughs> I think I think yeah, uh, Tyus is just happy that he didn't steal the uh, cruel taskmaster. So just gonna let that be enough. Wow. So I think Brawl Rose is gonna go all in here and just play the whirlwind. It's so much pressure. Am I, am I crazy enough? But I, I think he's uh, been actually more aggressive, Brawl Rose. I mean. It looked like he was playing around Shadow Flame, but the idea of Tyus having Shadow Flame and not being able to pop the board, I think, is just unlikely. Also, I don't know. I think I don't like the Whirlwind here more as well because it's such a lethal, whereas this doesn't be such a lethal. Yeah, it definitely is a consideration to make for going for that Whirlwind rather than going for the Unstable Goal here. Tice with the Mortal Coil can potentially draw into something, but uh, he's running out of options. How many cards does he possibly have left? Obviously, looking for that Shadow Flame here. And uh, picks up a Twilight Drake. Not going to be good enough, although he doesn't see that much damage on board at the moment. So it's currently only 11. So can continue to tap and gets a Demon Wrath, which is, doesn't <laughs> help too much. Uh, I mean, there's an, a weird strategy where if your opponent's board is too big, then maybe you could go for Demon Wrath and, you know, kind of force the patrons not to really work too well. But, yeah, not going to be available or not going to be useful right now. Just going to play the Forest here and the Twilight Drake right now. I mean, you can clear everything and get a huge board. Uh, maybe save the Whirlwind, go for Armorsmith and double moment with the Roland effects, not the actual spell, give him a full board. There is a Thalnos, I believe, though. Yeah, there's a Thalnos. A Thalnos would be enough. Shadow Flame would be enough. Oh, right, right. Yeah, Thalnos would be something that could help Tice immensely here. And just Tice essentially just holding on. Uh, other than the Xeraxis, has no healing available, I believe. Maybe he has the refreshment vendor. But, uh, yeah. Ah, he missed it. Ah. I'm sorry? I feel like he should have gone for the ghoul. I don't know. Oh, right. Maybe I'll just, oh, no, no, man, this is stronger. No, man. Yeah, if he goes uh, for the ghoul, it could be weak to that demon wrath, and Braros potentially knows that that's in the deck. This, I, think it, I, think, I think it's more about, yeah, like, it, it's, it's more about the pressure, because they would leave him with a full board, whereas this doesn't really. Uh, anyhow, he's going to tap, yeah, he kind of has to tap. Siphon, Siphon soul, soul is a bit of a help here. I mean, he can Siphon Soul plus Dark Bomb. However, he has not seen Gromish. So that could be an issue. Uh, he's already seen Dr. Boom. That's probably the second largest minion he's going to see other than Grom. And does he commit to this Dark Bomb and Siphon Soul? Exactly, yeah. But I mean, I think, I think he has to. There's only one patron left then. But he could turn those patrons... Actually, wait. Hmm. He couldn't really pop his own goal. Right. With the current board position, so he would have a 3 1 and a 3 3 oh. out of the whirlwind. It's, he's committing to the Demon Wrath. What would the Demon Wrath accomplish? It would make a bigger board, I believe. It makes I don't two think 3 this. 3s out of here, and then the, he still leaves two 3 1s on the board. Now he's going to play a Dark Bomb. 
Oh, because of the... Well, the... This is a mistake, I think. Yeah, isn't it? it's going to make a bigger board, it looks like. Huh. That was a bit bizarre. Yeah, and, even and he kills a... Yeah, it doesn't... He kills he, a 2 health one? Yeah, because he didn't have time. He started roping, and uh, the patrons weren't spawning quick enough, so he had to go for the 3-2 rather than the 3-3. And now Brawlers actually has a bigger board, at least as far as the patrons are concerned, bigger board than earlier, and Tice is in a lot of trouble. I mean, let's consider if we just killed the two with a siphon and the dark bomb. There's only two, one one uh, patron left with two health. The yeah. ghoul and the armor smith. He's not taking that much damage. I think he may have just been able to go for Jiraxis and, and taken this low I way through he, this. Yeah, I think he needs to finally go for Jiraxis here. Um, if he siphons souls, he goes up to 11 and there's 9 on board, but uh, it's... You're basically hoping to draw something crazy from there, so I think he finally has to go for Jiraxis here. And, and he kills uh, one of them, and uh, he kills one, there's three left. He's taking nine damage, going down to three health. No life tap left, though. Ugh. This, it, it's possible. I mean, a taunt would help him out. I think it's a Sunfury hasn't been played yet. This game has gone on so long that Braros has su somehow managed to accumulate 25 armor as a patron warrior with no shield block. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is actually just insane. Braros is going to change his mind and draw a card here. And going to obviously pick up some more patrons as well. Tice is going to need a miracle to get out of this one. Um, you know, just going to have to draw Shadow Flame right now, I think, or else he's just dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So, one card, we see it on the screen there, that graphic. Tice needs Shadow Flame or else he's lost this game. And that is Shadow Flame! Oh my <laughs> goodness, what is this game? Tice has been waiting the entire game for that card and finally picks it up. He has to go for it. Siphon Soul will not save him and he needs to play the Infernal in order to get rid of it. Or no, to use the Shadow Flame, excuse me. And, uh, He's still alive, however, one Gromish top deck will give Braros the win. Can he pick it up? He's drawn a lot of cards himself. And there it is. Gromash, oh wow. <laughs> one good top deck deserves another. And Braros, after a grueling game, will take the game and tie up the series one game to one. Feels like we've already played four games. I don't know about you, Kaldi. That was insane. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that was one game. Probably over half an hour, that's one game. Wow. Oof. And, I mean, the the crazy thing was there were so many options every single turn, you know. It wasn't like a life code situation where you're thinking about turns and maybe overthinking it potentially. Every single turn there was really nail-biting and required all the thought from both players. So it was organically long, I, I would put it. But, uh, yeah, really strenuous and really stressful game there. We are tied one game to one, as strange as it sounds, even though so much has happened thus far. And uh, we are down to Bra Rose's Shaman and Priest and Tice's Paladin and Warlock to see who will go to that final eight. <sighs> I just need to exhale after that one. <laughs> okay. Don't blame you here. Yeah, so we have Dragon Priest against Reno Lock. I think this is actually very even. It depends on how... how uh, the Warlock draws, obviously with 30 different cards, it's going to be very, very tough for him. Uh, but I mean, Seattle Flame can do wonders. I feel like the Priest has to be a little bit conservative. You can't commit to a 5-6 minion board to just mm -hmm. get Seattle Flame, because if that happens once, you're just out of it. As it will be if, essentially, if, if the Priest can shirk down the uh, Warlock before it goes on too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It will be imperative for Braros to gain a board here and put on that pressure. Um, even if, as we see, the draw for the Stark Peddler, what would you go over here? The the uh, Powerful Woman can be helpful with that Shadow Flame. Uh, the Corsair not going to be doing too much, whereas the Blood Imp can help your board stay alive. I think it has to be the Power Warming. I think this is not an automatic choice, but I feel like yeah, he's going to have to go with the Power Warming in the end. I mean, you could even just like go for a huge trade with power bombing and and, <clears throat> and silence it, but he go for the blood imp. Interesting. 
Yeah, it looks like he values that health uh, more than anything. Bra is going to get a pretty good trade onto this Dark Peddler. And, uh, yeah, just speaking of this matchup, I mean, Bra Rose might be afraid of uh, some sort of, you know, Shadow Flame later on in the game, but it does require a big enough minion to get rid of what Bra Rose has on board. And uh, typically, the Dragon Priest runs pretty healthy minions, so that might be a difficult task for Tice to be able to clear if Bra Rose is able to get enough momentum. Um, on the other hand, if Braros is able to do that, then Tice, even if he plays Reno Jackson and there's a lot of damage on the board from the uh, Priest, it's not going to be too useful. As we do see the Hellfire come into the hand of Tice, not going to be very useful right now. Neither is really any other card in his deck, or in his hand, excuse me. Uh, the Spellbreaker, not really useful until you see... Uh, something like a Valence Chosen, but going to just play it here for tempo. Uh, I mean, it does get a little bit of value here, but um, the more important thing, I suppose, is it can test the board, and uh, it does have the Big Game Hunter if something gets too big, and potentially the Owl in his deck as well uh, for something that gets buffed up. Yeah, 4-3 is always tough for a priest to deal with. Sweater has been the bane of, of the priest's existence. I mean, we had Historically, stuff like one turn one turn uh, Chilwin Jerry was what what people really lost to. Uh, but I don't know. He's gonna have to just give this two one away here, throwing both the Rome Crest into it. I, I can't see another scenario working out. He's gonna heal it. Oh, that's very interesting. I, I suppose his hand wasn't too powerful right here, but I'm gonna just throw away that guy just for some card draw. Rip Worm Wormrus Agent, and uh, Tyx right now has again the ability to go for that Hellfire. Would clear his own minion, but um, yeah, interesting to see what he goes for. Could also go for the Sludge Belcher, which obviously uh, there isn't a very good trade for those North Star clerics. So I imagine it's going to be the Sludge Belcher in the end. Uh, I think to mention though is yeah, like there's a potential for something like Valence, and then he gets two more cards, but I don't know what Tyson actually wants to play around that. Hellfire seems to be too much to go for around this early in the game, but I like Tyson's position. I mean, he's at 26 health, he's got a bigger hand, Raro isn't really accomplishing much. I mean, he had the coin, so Tyson now knows that there's going to be no you know, Twilight Guardian. He knows that there's going to be no Black and Corruptor, for example. Right. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is that Braros could have used Valence Chosen if he had it in hand to clear up the Spellbreaker the turn earlier. Could have made a 3-8 uh, Wormus Agent out of the one that was already nerfed and uh, gotten a good trade there. So Tice knows that unless Braros top decked it in the last three draws, that he doesn't have that quite in hand yet. But uh, looks like Braros really favoring that card draw, thinking about just even healing the Spellbreaker once more. Not liking his hand at the moment, apparently. And uh, I mean, this is something that maybe a control priest wants to do, but yeah, I don't know. If, if you're if you're running if you're running dragon priest, you want to be playing a zoo style, not a control style, especially against a greedy deck than you are playing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, Bra Bra was playing this extremely slow, but getting a lot of cards out of it. However, these are the last cards that he can essentially draw uh, if you can if Tyus is able to deal with these Northshire clerics. Everything after this is basically just cycle uh, with the power word shield and the Azure Drakes. So we will see what Tyus decides to go with here. He could clear the board by throwing his spellbreaker in and using the, the Hellfire, but uh, if he does that it would most likely just be a, a, a tap afterward. Uh, the <clears throat> Excuse me, the uh, Defender of Argus doesn't really help too much. And uh, Sylvanas yeah. could be an option as well just to provide some tension. But uh, the way Braros is going, he might use that as an opportunity to just draw more cards. Looks like after you see this tap, we might just see the Hellfire here. Wouldn't mind that, yeah. But I think maybe he wants to wait a little bit longer. This is going on for so long. But mm. the thing is, in the late game, uh, now, generally, the Priest only has... Two, uh, two huge minions. Generally, either a a Chilwing, a a uh, Sylvanas, or Doctor Boom is the first one, and the second one is generally always a Sarah. And now, wow, this is a very big card actually getting that powered shield because he's able to buff up his uh, Northshire cleric to get out of range and draw a card while he clears the board with Holy Nova. But to talk about it, yeah, um, 
the answer to Isera generally is execute, but there's another big one here for the Rhino Luck, and that's Siphon Soul. So I feel if he goes to the late game, you know, ties against these two, which in this case is going to be the Sylvanas and the Isera, ties at Sylvanas, Dr. Boom, Jiraxis, at least, you know, he has the Sierra play, which is also huge. So I feel like he'll just have the advantage. Yeah, absolutely. He has the bigger maintenance in the end. Uh, the one thing going for Braros is his deck is a bit more consistent, and he has drawn plenty of cards to be able to fuel him throughout this game. Uh, as you can see, his hand is pretty full. I mean, if you think about it, obviously he was uh, he was playing more of a control priest style, going for more of those card draws. But in the end, it might help help uh, you know fuel him throughout this game. Particularly because if you go too all in in the early game and, and your opponent uses the Reno, then you might not have enough fuel to finish out the game and kill your opponent. But now his hand is looking pretty daunting, uh, especially if you're looking from Tyson's point of view. So many things for Braros to be able to do now. However, this uh, this Sylvanas is definitely causing him problems. It sure is. I think he may even have to give his stuff to the North Shore and go for the death here. Yeah, it's was... not pretty, but it's... Uh... Yeah, definitely I was thinking about that too. Just uh, <laughs> don't need that North Shore Cleric anymore. He's drawn plenty of cards already. But uh, he's just going to go for a bit of a greedy play. Steal that slime and hit the face. Tice, on the other hand... He... Um, just a bunch of, you know disparate options that he can go for, none of which are too appealing, doesn't really need to heal quite yet, the Defender of Argus doesn't really do too much here, so is kind of already a threat, as is Hellfire, again, not much of an option here, so I imagine he's just going to tap. Wouldn't blame him for going with that, I mean, Reno Jackson still hasn't been played, uh, but on the follow-up though, I think he could maybe go for the Earthen Ring, that seems playable. I don't know if he actually wants to go ahead and trade, but yeah, maybe it, maybe you kill the slime and then you um, earthen ring your Sylvanas just to make it so that I mean you draw your opponent a card, but uh, it just makes it more annoying to deal with if you're Braros. Maybe I think I would prefer. Okay, so he's going for the half fire. What's the follow up to that? Oh, he can draw himself a card here using the, the oh, okay. uh, earthen ring, which is kind of. It's nice. really really smart, yeah. Yeah, he gets to draw that card Ooh. without having to use the tab. So, yeah, he can develop a minion and go for that at the same time. In the end, he didn't have many other options, so uh, I definitely can't blame him for going for this. It was it was uh, okay, but everything else was just subpar. Mm -hmm. Now, he has the option to use the uh, Black Encryptor. I mean, it kind of has to come down here. wonder if he's going to go for the Zombie Chow. Saves the Zombie Chow. All right, all right. I mean, Tyus doesn't really have the opportunity to draw any more cards with his North Shire Cleric, so I think I would have been fine with just going for the Zombie Chow there. It's not like it matters too much. Uh, it doesn't really lose to the North Shire Cleric. It's more of an even battle. Uh, now, Tyus can Tyus actually go for just Jiraxes here? That's what I want to know. Ooh, that, that is a good point that you make there. Could just go for Jirax and start pit spitting out those 6-6s, six which would be obviously extremely powerful. Looks like he's going to favor going for the Molten before he commits to that. My idea is yes, he has double taunt, mm -hmm. and he also has the heal but to follow it up. But has the siphon soul for the Sera, so what is he really looking to draw into other than Reno? I don't know. I mean, if you can get away with it, you generally want to go yeah. for it. only against Priest. This is the only match where you can really go for something like that. Yeah, Jaxus, Jaxus itself can single-handedly win you the Priest matchup. And like you said, he does have those options to deal with an opponent's board. Uh, perhaps he was looking for something like Shadow Flame uh, to be able to get that AoE off in case Braros has a, a pretty big board. But, yeah, as it stands, it does go for the Molten Giant. And Braros does have the Shadow Word Death for it, so it looks like Braros is taking a bit of a lead. And this is uh, exactly the reason why you go for Draxus in that situation. Uh, not, I mean, obviously Tice made a pretty decent play there, maybe baiting out the death, for instance, but uh, in this case, now Braros has committed to the board, and this now you cannot definitely go for a Draxus, because there's way too much damage. Mm -hmm. Gotta be with you there, but what does he go for now, though? Yeah, like, he had the opportunity last turn for to go for Draxus. Shadow Flame is what he needs, Voidwalker doesn't do it. He may need to tap heal, but possibly here, but it's, it's not ideal. Right. 
and you definitely don't want to be using that uh, siphon tool before Ysera comes down. Uh, having to silence it with an owl is just really painful. That 412 can get extremely good trades down the line if you go for that route. So yeah, a bunch of just uh, just kind of tech cards in the hand of Tyus right now, healing taunts, uh, what have you, and actually is going to go for the Daraxis. This is kind of crazy considering he could have gone for it last turn, but maybe realiz realizing his make, realizing his mistake, excuse me, realizing that uh, that's something he should have gone for, and uh, this lone Void Walker going to be standing in the way of Ra Rose's victory potentially. So with Holy Nova, is that lethal? Four damage. It's lethal, yeah. It is exactly lethal. lethal. That is exactly lethal with the extra damage from the Holy Nova. And Braros is going to take that game, going to go up two games to one, and Tice is in danger of not advancing to the final eight. Absolutely, yeah. Well done to Braros. I mean, this is what he needed in this series. Winning a heavily unfavored matchup, I would have thought. But Tice just didn't draw Fugan, he didn't draw Stalag, he didn't draw Shadow Flame, he didn't draw Dr. Boom. And those are cards he needs, the mid-game mid, mid -game minions to pull through. He had the, the, uh, he had the heal, but he didn't have the Reno. He okay. had the taunts, but those just came a bit late. I think he could have, yeah, he could have gotten away with Jaraxxus last time, but this was a bit ambitious. He may have wanted to... I felt that, yeah, it was either going to be going for Jaraxxus on the turn where he had 5-3 only on board, or basically heal until he get the Shadow Flame. But... Right. Tyson kind of went middle of the way. I don't blame him though. He played it, played it well. Uh, Up until that point. But now, yeah. yeah. Now though, Braros has to win a game with uh, yeah. the Shaman. Yeah, this is going to be the question, right? Can Braros complete the upset over Tice? This would be. I think the biggest upset of the tournament, especially considering that Tice has a pretty good lineup here. He's not running Shaman. He's not running one of the, you know, the decks that has underperformed thus far. He has Druid, Paladin, Warlock, and right now he's down two games to one facing this Shaman. Can Braros finish this out? It will be up to the quality of the Shaman deck and the quality of his play. Obviously, Tice could have a say in that as well if he's able to play this impeccably. That's spot on here. I uh, wonder how he's going to be dealing with his Trog. Uh, generally, still the minibot is what you want uh, against Shaman. Knife Circle is considered weak. Uh, but it just... This is a tough turn though. Does he just go for the Haunted Creeper and, and let that be it? He could go Haunted Creeper into Secret Keeper Avenge. Into... I think that's probably what I would go for here. But right. it's, it's painful. Yeah, it's painful not going for your super combos. Uh, obviously with that Knife Juggler into Muster. Or, you know, getting that, that Secret Keeper right on the board. But uh, if you go for the Secret Keeper and the event, then Braros can potentially deal with it with that uh, Rock Biter in hand. Or maybe something else that could buff up the Trog. Uh, I mean, looking from Tice's point of view. But uh, yeah, it seems like the, the Creeper is the safest option. Would die to something like an Urshock, but I think you're kind of fine with uh, getting a Creeper Urshock and saving potentially a future minion. But gonna go for the Knife Juggler instead. I imagine this is going to be uh, killed by this rock biter. Don't want your tunnel trog to be dying for free, essentially. And second lightning storm in the hand of Bra Rose does not feel good. I don't know. I think it's okay. The thing is, Tyson is playing Secret Paladin, and Bra Rose is playing the midrange shaman, and the midrange shaman is the one that's in control mm -hmm. in the late game. So you want to be taking this to the late game. Uh, yeah, but yeah I, so having having assurance is really really decent here. I think you should yeah, definitely start by attacking with the truck and then go for Bran. There's no secret to follow this up, but if he does use the mercy, he gets the truck for free though. But I mean, if, Alan, if he does go for that, there is at least the storm that will proc without using the Avenge. Right. That is definitely true. The one the one problem with having two sets of AoEs in hand, and uh, basically the only AoEs in Braros' deck, is that you're kind of forced to use them early. It's like having two Blade Flurries in your hand as a rogue. And uh, in that situation, you're, you're kind of forced, because you don't have other cards in your hand, to use them too early, and that means that you don't have them for the later game. So that could cause some trouble later on for Braros here. But uh, we'll see if he goes for that play right now. Could go for it. And, uh, like you said, prevent any event from proccing, but uh, it would overload him next turn. It would prevent the Paladin Shutter. So, with that in mind, looks like he's wow. going to go for the Paladin Shutter. I, I would have definitely gone for the Storm, there's no question. And maybe that's just me, but 
mean, you have two storms. When are you going to get two sets of board states that are worth storming? Right. I don't know. I suppose he's looking towards the late game, realizes that uh, one storm could be useful uh, in the near future, but the latter storm will probably have to be used uh, later in the game just because it has to hold on to it the entire time. Kind of treat it like, you know, it's basically a 7-drop or something like that. So, uh, yeah, Brauro's playing patient, but right now falling behind on board. Let's see if this is finally the turn where he commits to that Lightning Storm. And if he does, does he uh, attack with the Shredder first and hope that the Lightning Storm kills off the buffed minion? I think he should, yeah, but this is going to be Avenge wow, and, and uh, Redemption. Redemption. Oof. Redemption's going to be pretty painful as well. Going to be on Oh, it gets the Avenge on the Secret Keeper. Wow, okay. So there still can be a kill on it, but if it doesn't kill it, if it doesn't land the 50-50 here, then it's going to be very painful for Braros. It's going to have to be the uh, totem here, I think. You really would want the uh, spell damage totem. The Haunted Creeper isn't bad, though. It's really a close call with it, which one you go for here. Right, yeah. It looks like he's going to go for the... <laughs> it's going to wave around that lightning storm first to uh, get some extra good fortune here. Does it roll? It's, don't cover the... <laughs> it does, does get the roll. The oof, oof. <laughs> Gets the three on there. was heart pounding. Tice is obviously oh, not happy no. about that. Tice gets another mysterious challenge, but nothing for turn five. Do you just one want hex the, and, do you yeah, just One hex for one BGH and, 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 and Tice could be out of the tournament. Exactly right. Do you just play the event here? Or, yeah, I mean, not the event, the redemption, just to... You know, kind of guarantee that you get the minion on the board, but I guess it's pretty bad here considering that uh, the minion just comes back, or the minion just just dies to the second minion of Braros. But looks like he is gonna commit to it and uh, gonna attack this Dark Peddler so that there isn't a good trade for Braros. I mean, it does basically guarantee that there's only one of uh, one redemption in the deck. I mean, he's already used one yeah, of them, so both there's, no, them, there's so. No, no, nothing lost by not using it right now. He's going to allow Tice to bring back his 1-1. And uh, this is somewhat important for Tice, just to have another minion on the board that can soak up that event potentially, and just in general be annoying as he plays out this his first of his two Mysterious Challengers. Healing Tone is pretty huge here, actually. Uh, heals up the Dark Petter. Let's see if he just kills it. Just making it more annoying for his opponent and does go for the kill. Now, what secrets are up? We know that two redemptions are down. That's going to be an Avenge, I believe, as well as a Noble Sacrifice. And from there, it could be Competitive Spirit or Repentance. It has to be Repentance. I think Repentance, Avenge, oh. and a Noble Sacrifice. I guess we just uh, proved that it wasn't Repentance. Sorry, so, make you feel bad. Commanding Spirit. Uh, yeah, or... Noble Shark and Avenge, but this is looking really tough now for Tice. I mean, it could be potentially just lethal. I think Braros absolutely shouldn't attack here, yeah, that's correct. Now, he can't play into the Dr. Boom. It's, it's competitive, so he can't play into the Dr. Boom. All right. I think Hawkham will probably be the best possible draw here. Right. Yeah, it would be pretty good. Noble Sacrifice is quite possibly Ouch. the worst draw in his deck. Uh, he... He can't even play it here, even if he plays a Mysterious Challenger, so uh, what do you do? Do you just go for the second Mysterious Challenger? And I think you actually draw nothing, right? You don't draw a second Competitive Spirit, so... Yeah. You draw nothing, you just play a 6-6, six, six. but is that I good enough? you have to go for that, though, yeah. You have to go for that, I think. Uh, you have to trade to Dr. Boom where you just risk losing there and there. I mean, he, one Hex, one Big Game Hunter, and... It's all over with Ty, so he is just holding for dear life with this mysterious challenger. But overall, though, Braros is just running away with this game. Yeah, he's looking. Is this actually happening? Yeah, he's looking really good in this game so far. Who'd have thought that mid range Shawin could compete with the Secret Paladin, which has been dominating so much recently? But uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to go for the Shredder. I mean, if you think about it, it has almost as much health overall as the Mysterious Challenger, so it could be just as difficult to deal with. Look, Braros does have a very good answer for it, though, in that uh, Fire Elemental. However, there is a... No, there's no redemption. So he can just actually just kill this. It will spawn a 4-3-1-1. I mean, it's no, most likely going to be an Opal Sacrifice from Braros' side, but we know that it is an Opal Sacrifice. Depends on where the Avenge lies. Uh, but, I mean, if it hits the 1-1... Either way, yeah, the, the Fire Elemental... Oh, really wow, fun. kills it off. 
Well, or... he could get avenged, actually. But yeah, now he's going to be able to kill it off regardless with his Fire Elemental. So that's actually pretty big. And uh, yep. going to go for this. It's The Shredder's going to die last. So yeah, this bomb's going to definitely go face. And now he's able to clear this off with his Fire Elemental. And Tice is in major trouble right now. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it says 16 health. If we look at the Noble Sacrifice coming down, uh, he has about 10 damage at least. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, gonna play out this Mysterious Challenger. How many secrets is it gonna pull? I think. Wow, zero. Zero oh. secrets. Yeah, both Avengers oh. are gone. Tice realizes it as well. Gonna have to just play out this Noble Sacrifice out of hand. I believe Bra Rose knows what that is if he's been paying attention. Even gets, gets the hex. hex. Oh my god. How much damage do we have though? Six, seven, eight. Plus, plus a crackle. Just six, seven, sorry. Just a seven on board because of this uh, get down. So, not going to be able to crackle his way to victory. Do you use the hex here, though? Because are you afraid of some sort of Tyrion? I suppose you wouldn't be because on eight mana, Tice would have played the Tyrion rather than the Mysterious Challenger here, especially because it drew no secrets. But Braros, again, looking almost certain to take this game. And uh, what can he possibly draw here? Even Consecrate doesn't seem to cut it. Exactly. Divine Con Favor, maybe. Well, that's, oh, that's wow. probably the best card. It's probably <laughs> the best card, but it can be dealt with here uh, from Bra Rose. I imagine he's going to be going for a Crackle. Actually, that is guaranteed lethal, isn't it, with the Crackle? Guaranteed lethal, yeah. That is guaranteed Bra -Rose lethal. Bounces. Wow. So not even Tyrion is able to save Tice, and Bra Rose is going to be your second place player, going to be the person who's going to go to the final eight and the second Chinese qualifier to make it. Congratulations to him, and gotta be so bitter for Tice here. Dog first place, Bra Rose second place, Tice third place, Kimmy fourth place. Not for people who were expecting. Ty's no. definitely the favorite in the group now out here. He won two of his games, was in first place until the last round, and just falls ever so short here wow. against uh, Braros. Three way, two, one tie. But uh, yeah, Tice is going to fall because of those game scores. Going, let's uh, recap it for you guys. Dog was. His scores were 3 2, 2 3, and 3 1. As we see on the screen there, Dog and Braros are your people to advance to the final eight. That is going to be happening tomorrow, guys, so definitely don't miss it. And uh, yeah, just continuing Braros 2 and 3, 3 and 2, and 3 and 1. So actually the same score as Dog, but Dog did have the head to head victory there, so going to be finishing in first. Finally, Tice 3 2, 3 2, 1 3. Just falls short. There's your matchups tomorrow Firebat versus Jay Shaw. Tom versus Braros, Eloise versus Life Coach, and Dog versus Kalento. Some high profile, huge matchups here, and uh, I'm super excited about it. What about you, Cody? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, at least that's con um, consolation. The, the Chinese fans will have a, a Chinese player in every match except the last one. So, but I mean, Eloise, is, is she considered a foreigner now, or is she considered, you know, <laughs> Full on Chinese, it's right. hard to tell. Yeah, it could go both ways. Uh, she's a, she's loved by everyone, basically. And I uh, think even, so. Yeah. yeah. Even in that last up, last matchup, we do have Colento, who the Chinese fans absolutely adore. They call him K God. Uh, so every single match, something for the Chinese fans to watch. There, obviously, we have some great matches for the Western audience as well, and I'm absolutely pumped to be seeing those matches tomorrow. Pretty sad to be seeing Tice go down, but. Uh, I mean, if it's going to go down, going to be going down in this crazy fashion that we saw today with excellent play by Bra Rose and just insane games. Absolutely. He went out kicking and, and took out so many players today and won, won a lot of games. I'm, I'm really surprised that this happened. He at least ended on a Tyrion, but it just ended up not being enough. Yeah, absolutely. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you turn in tomorrow for that final eight. It's going to be a, a really interesting format, pretty similar to like you've seen thus far. The players have to play all nine classes in order to win. So if they win with three classes in the quarterfinals, they can't use it for the rest of the tournament and so on and so forth with the semifinals and finals. So you really want to watch that very similar uh, formats using all the decks and it's going to be fireworks tomorrow. Uh, any last words, Kaldi? Uh, I guess 
just to talk about, we're going to be starting off with Faiba versus Jaysia, the actual champion against the uh, Chinese hope here. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be our first match, then on to Tom versus Braro. So a lot of Chinese players, a lot of foreigners, a lot of excitement tomorrow. Make sure you don't miss it. All right, thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.